Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I'll be doing a part 2 of my variables tutorial series. So, let's get started. And just like any Simple Planes video, I'm going to start with the progress updates on the SWL120. I've done quite a lot on this plane, starting with the wings. I've added the engines onto the wings, and you'll see landing gear here as well. And this is because I actually put the whole thing together aside from that cockpit interior. Like, I've done a lot of work on these wings. Everything's very detailed now. I did a full, what I call, port connections reconstruction where I put the assembly I want to reconstruct in a different file and then I go into the XML file remove the whole connections section and that means there's no connection so everything just falls apart and then I connect everything the way I want it to be connected and that way that actually eliminated a few problems I was having especially when with the wings when I was let's say, spinning out of control, just doing something violently when flying, the wings would just break apart and explode. And I don't know what I did, but the port connection reconstruction fixed that. So here is that this new test fit. And this just does not have a cockpit interior. It only has the seats that just come with the fuselage. There's nothing in here, just the basic just like layout of the cockpit, but there's no controls. And this plane, as is, like the test fit too, this is about the upper limit of what my computer can handle at 60 FPS. So the controls are just engine 1 is act on activation one group 1, and then engine 2 is on activation group 2. And then there's no other controls. Note the whole tail section, it looks like it has wings, but it doesn't do anything. The, like the horizontal stabilizers don't even have their own control surfaces, they're just the basic wing. These wings are all done. So we'll need a few small details, but they're pretty much done. I added some cameras. In the cockpit, actually, yeah, yeah, I do have something in the cockpit. So you can see what it's going to look like. Like, there's going to be an overhead panel there, there's going to be some screens here, throttles. I actually have the throttles too in that cockpit interior one. Engines, I think I've showed this. Yeah, I've sho I haven't sh I have shown this. And basically, I just put everything, put it all into one file. And I, it actually flies now. Like, I added some wings in the tail section and in the wings. I also made it so the flaps have to be, like, the rear flaps, they have to be fully retracted before the slats have to be retracted. So I think this flight behavior that it's doing when I take off is going to be the final flight behavior with a few small tweaks. So it looks pretty good. And the inboard... Spoilers, no. The, the inboard speed brakes are not able to be extended during flight. And the ailerons, they also have a function where they both pitch up as active speed brakes. And that is also disabled when the plane is above the ground. So this is the wing flex, and obviously during normal flight, like as a passenger plane, this wouldn't be how you fly the plane. But you can see this wing flex. There are three segments. Well, technically two, but three. This segment here is actually not flexible, it just is permanently stuck onto the plane. And then this, se this section, which houses the outboard flap and then the outboard slats. Also, you'll, you'll notice this section, like in the middle of the wing, is slightly grey. And that is because I was looking at pictures of real wings in real life. And I noticed that was a dominant feature, so I added that to this plane. Yeah, so it this is what it's going to look like, the finished plane. And I kind of forgot this is actually a variable tutorial video. I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of the updates. There was nothing here, I just added some landing gear, the nose landing gear. Needs a few small tweaks, but otherwise it's done. Tail, literally like 10 parts. I'm not going to touch this until much later. Test fit 2, actually that's this thing. And I'm going to delete that because I'm done with the test fitting. I have an archive of it. This, this is actually not the SWL 120, it's one of my smaller projects. And it's called the SWL DT, it's gonna be like a semi-trailer truck. But I'm, I don't think I'm gonna finish this, but it's there. SWL Raptor, this is like a fighter jet, futuristic. Yeah, he, oh, here's something. 
So I added a battery section, and they do have the variables import and tooltips, but I haven't done anything with them. I need to add more controls before I can make this cockpit working. And yep, this is just the nav system concepts that I showed you in the other video. And this is what we're actually going to be doing today. So it may look like the one mostly from the last video, but I've added something on the top. I also made Switch 3 and Switch 4, as well as the beacon lights, back to the defaults, which is activate one for the switches, and absolutely nothing, so the beacon lights are always on. And then there's this button here, so plus and minus, and then this Pitchison, and I've attached it a text part, which is called a label actually, just with a few small construction tweaks. So it has the number 100 displayed in green like a standard like digital display. So I'm going to show you how to make what I'm going to call a value that you can adjust with buttons. And then I'm just going to have switch 3 and switch 4. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to make a realistic engine starter with a starter motor, like a how, let's say, a small, light propeller aircraft would start up with one engine. And and I've taken both these ideas from the SRL-10, and we're going to start with the starter f for the pretty small propeller plane. So switch 1 and 2 are the same as the last video, and it's very simple, but switch 3. We're going to have switch 3. I'm going to say it's going to be a switch 3 input. 3 input. So basically, the switches are going to have the same input, Switch the way then switch for input. Like you could name this whatever you want, like let's say engine two starter. But I'm just gonna have switch three and switch four, so I'll go ahead and do that. So the beacon lights are on switch three and switch four, and then the switches are switch three input and switch four input. Then in the variable setters, we're gonna call switch three, and I'm gonna have it require the previous switch two, then switch one to be on. So I'm actually gonna have the same behavior as the other one. But for switch 4, not that, we're going to have something a little bit different. I'm also going to point out that I actually kind of need to add some interaction type because I had to remove that. So switch 3 is just the same interaction type of toggle. And switch 4 is going to have the interaction type of once. It could also be continuous, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to have it be once. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have switch 4. Rely on the switch 3 as well, and then we're also going to add something called switch 4 input. And that switch 4 input is is going to reference its own input, but it's going to be times by switch 3, like this. And I just realized that you could ha make it simpler by just moving switch 4, but I, th I think I'm just going to leave it in. So we're going to load the level. And I'll show you what this does. So the way this works is you have the normal switch 1, switch 2, switch 3. And then you have a switch 4. But it has an interactive type of once, or it could be continuous. So you just click it once, and then it goes back to its original position, but the light is now on. This is different from the standard one we had before. Wherein, if we turn off, let's say, switch 3, switch 4 goes off, like it should. Then when I turn the switch 3 back on, this is now off. We can turn it on again by clicking switch 4. The way this works, we have switch 4 input times switch 3. We have a, a switch 3 interaction type of once, which is also written to by a variable. So what happens is when switch 3 is now 0, that then says the switch 4 input to be 0, which then resets the original, well, which then resets the original variable and the input because it has an interaction type of once, meaning that it has to be written to zero by something else. That is how we can have a sort somewhat realistic setup behavior for, let's say, an engine. And we could do this a little more, more complicated by having a button or a switch with that interaction type of continuous and then using the sum function for funky trees to have you hold that switch or button for a certain amount of time until the engine is past a certain RPM. But that's a little complicated and I'll leave that for variables tutorial part 3. Now we're going to look at this value that we can adjust with buttons. And there are many uses for this. 
good example of this is yesterday old 10 so i'm just going to load that up there we go i just had to dig it out of my archives so i'm just going to load this plane start up all the overhead stuff i think we only need yeah we just need that and this value adjusted with buttons is really evident in all the autopilot controls and all the radio controls. So here's, here's what we're going to recreate today. So take the altitude module. It has a value and then there are two buttons which increase or decrease value by let's say 100. And we can simply with very simple code change this like and we can have multiple buttons too that are just the same value. Like this one has a bigger adjust than a smaller adjust by 5 and 0 0.5. And then the heading has 1 by 5 and then 1. And it's really simple to show you that after we make a simple 2 button 1. So back to our tutorial. I also forgot to mention this piston here. This is by default set to VTOL. And we're also going to have this activated by switch 2 which is really simple. Just come in here. I'm actually going to have it set to switch 4 because that's what we just created. So when this is when switch 4 is activated then this label will show up on this black box. I'm also going to come in here. I'm just going to say that these buttons, so this is the left one which is actually I'll just swap them around because that should be like that. So the negative button I'm going to have the input idea with variable. I'm going to set that. I'm just going to say value decrease, and this one's going to be value increase. I'm also going to add an interaction type of once. I recommend that you don't do continuous because that will not be the behavior that we want to do. So just set it to once. And you also don't need to have this piston. That's just for realism. If you want to have it activated by, let's say, an electric switch. So you can just have the label on a surface, and then these two buttons. I'm just going to have this piston here, because why not? So this button is value increase. I'm just going to say increase value by... I'm just going to say 1. And tooltips don't actually do anything aside from just providing information to the user. But that's why they're there, to provide information to the user. So increase and decrease this value by 1. So now what we're going to do, and this is the key part, we're going to go into the variable setters. We're going to add some variables. The first one's going to, I'm going to call value. Then I'm going to have four other ones. And repeat this idea, but carefully if you want to have more buttons. And make sure that you use a different button name for each different value that you add. Like, let's say you have two radios or two different values. You want to make sure you don't use the same anything, like the same name at all for those. So value increase. I'm also going to add A to this. And then value increase, but just that. This one's going to be zero because that resets the button that has the interaction type of once, therefore setting it back to zero. And then this one, I'm going to have value increase A, which is referencing itself, times value increase. Actually, no, it's not. It's going to be plus. Here we go. And the way this works is whenever you click that button, value increase, it adds a number, it increases value increase A by 1. Since for a single physics stick, this is actually 1, not 0, which, mean, which means you're actually adding something to it. And then the whole value increase A value increases. And this is a simple button click counter, as you could call it. And then we're going to add another one, the same concept, but this time it's for value decrease. And even this is a decrease one, we're still going to have plus because we're not actually going to subtract or add them yet. This is going to done in this variable here, value. Now what we're going to do in value, to get a value that we can adjust both ways, we're going to have a value here, this value, and then I'm going to have like a starter value, so what, what it's at when you start the level, I'm just going to say, let's say 100, and then I want it to add to that 100, value increase A, and then I want to subtract from that final number, value decrease A. And that will change the value, but first we need to get a label to display that value. Which is kind of important if you want to know what your value is. So come into a label, and actually do, you can do this in here. 
So instead of handle, which is just what I set to it to, you want to add these curly brackets. And then this changes the label from displaying normal text to displaying funky trees text. And then we're just going to have it value like this. And then if we just measure this out, you can see it's zero. But that's because it doesn't really work until we go into the level. And then first you also need to turn this on. So here's our 100. And then as we click on the buttons, this value changes. And then if we show our other ones, like let's say value increase A and value decrease A, we can see that when we click the appropriate button, the appropriate value increases. And let's say you want to, let's say, so let's say the number is somewhere that's not 100. If you wanted to, let's say, reset that number to the original value, which is 100, the way I do that is I'd have some variables that write as the value of 0 to the increase A, like basically the A part of that value, which is the click counters. It's, it tells all the click counters to be 0. And we don't, the reason we can't just write, let's say, a value of 100 to just the, the name value is because they'll be instantly overwritten by value increase A and value decrease A, which are adding to 100 or subtracting from 100. So we have to, to tell the value increase A and value decrease A is to be 0, and then that way the value just reads them as 0, and therefore it doesn't add or subtract anything from 100, and therefore the value is 100. And I think that's going to be it for this video, because I can never tell how long these videos are going to be. But I'm pretty sure I've been recording for about half an hour, and I haven't really paused for anything. So I'm going to say that's enough. So in the next video of this variables tutorial series, I will be showing you some more advanced stuff with these values and button click counters. And I think that'll be it. And also, just before we go, I'm going to show you a really good use in the SRL 120 of those click counters, but I almost forgot to say this, in these click counters, in the cockpit interior. So in the cockpit interior we have this file setup. I'm probably going to change this later so virtual reality players can actually move the throttle. But anyway, so here in this radio panel, we have, it's, it, it, it's a little different to the SWL10, so we have these dials, these are magnets, so you can't do anything with them, because the only place doesn't have dials. But I have what I call tooltip buttons, and when you click them, the dial rotates, and, if, and this value here changes. And we have an adjust by 5, and adjust by 0.5. And we have a few other slight controls using button click counters, and we have some reset switches. I'll show you how the reset switches work in the next video. So that'll be it for this video, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!